ran out of tape there, but you know, my point was that we've got more surplus housing in America than ever before in history. We've been very productive. It's gotten easier and easier and easier to build the housing we need as a civilized society, okay, uh, due to uh, advancements in technology, state-of-the-art tools and equipment, okay, so it's, it, to me it's outra outrageous, it's unnerving and insufferable, and yes, I detest, not the people, but I detest the fact that you're deceived that you are delusional. It's not me that's delusional about things. I understand economics and I understand a lie when it's staring me in the face. And the idea that everybody, not only in America but around the world, cannot be housed is a lie. The idea that everybody in the world uh, uh, can have clean drinking water and healthy food to eat is a lie. The idea that we can't have uh, vehicles that run on hydrogen is a lie. Not hydrogen that you put in a tank, but hydrogen produced on demand. Very safe form of producing hydrogen because it only produces the amount that's being used. So if you look into, look what Bob Lazar does with a solar panel, he's able to produce his own hydrogen, which he puts into tanks and puts into his Corvette car. Look into what Stan Meyer did. He built a, uh, an engine that would run on water, he put it in a car, and it got 100 miles to one gallon of water. And it was nothing but a bank of automotive batteries, which created a powerful enough electrical charge to separate this uh, hydrogen atom, however it works. I don't know a lot about the science. All I know is that they need to do something. They need to crack some kind of molecule or atom in, 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 in to produce this hydrogen artificially. And it's, it's, this, is, this is antiquated, archaic science. This goes back, the ability to do this goes back to the 18th century. Okay, so the idea that the first cars that rolled off the assembly line couldn't have been uh, you know, self-propelled and self-producing hydrogen cars is, is absurd to me. It's preposterous. It's a lie from the pit of hell. They don't want that because, again, if your money, your fungible asset is oil, well, that's a threat. Do you understand that solving problems is a threat to the very establishment and those that represent it? whether advertently or inadvertently, or they get trapped in it and they say, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, I'm afraid. My masters, they, they you know, they hold my paycheck. If I don't, if I don't please my, my cruel overlords and be a part of this establishment and conform and go along with the program, I'm going to lose my paycheck. Then I'm going to be one of those transients out there dying on the street. See, it's, transient is a euphemism. Now, it's no longer politically correct to call you homeless because that would suggest there's a solution you see is getting you housed. Uh, why isn't the government doing something? The government, if they're there to protect the people, well, housing, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, you know, that's a, a health code violation because it's unsafe to, to stay out in the elements. This is one of very few essential human needs. So people are scared. Yes, I understand that, but I'm not here to take anything from anybody. I would just add to it. And I'm just going through insights that he has given me, that's shown me. Yes, this can work. The reason it doesn't work is because you've got this same tiny group at the very top that are just murderous, murderous, genocidal freaks. These people are Satanists, a lot of these people, open, overtly. Okay, they are haters of humanity. And they come off, they try to convey themselves, portray themselves as the good guys. No, 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 no. We want to save the earth. So this is for the greater good, not of the population, but of the planet. That's greater. The planet is greater than these people, these useless feeders on the planet. So come on over to my side. Think like me. Get on board with the Georgia Guidestones. Understand, we got to get the earth down to 500 million people from this over 7 billion now. Come on now. Get with it. We're the good guys. Just think how nice the earth would be without all these people on it. Just think it would free up the freeways. There's another problem. All these nuanced, associated societal ills. Difficulty finding a parking place in the city. Do you think this because there's no solution to these problems? They want problems. They want you inundated. They want you constantly overwhelmed with problems. No, you say, you're, you know, general plan for a city. No, you can't build more housing here until you've got adequate ha parking for everybody to have at least two cars. That's it, as simple as that. Free public parking, like the library, free public books, 
free public housing, free public food, free public water, all of it. Why not? Why not? Because they've trained you to believe why not. That I'm the nut. I'm not the nut. I'm just trying to be a decent human being. I'm just trying to love my fellow man. I'm just trying to do what Jesus commanded me to do. Okay? So if I love him above all else, he'll give me all good things and knowledge and wisdom and compassion and mercy are good things. And that's what I have for you and your children, your children's children. That's what I have for everybody. That's what I want for myself. That's what I want for my kids. And it's all very simple and it can be done very simply. If we just come together as a family and if we just said, you know what, I know what these people want. They want me to just, you know, I, I'm making good money. But, you know, what they're telling me is that, you know, hey, things are getting rocky and you better save up and, you know, you better get cheap. You better become a Scrooge because this is the way you have security in this world is by being like me and just save and save and don't spend. And so when you've got all these people with the concentrated wealth, the rich, and they get more insecure because they're more scared of their master because they see that the stops are being pulled out and he, that he's angry and he's going out there with wrath to try to impoverish people. Look, the middle class is going down the tubes. Who's next? The rich. So I've got to pull back. I've got to find somebody cheaper to do my housework. I've got to find somebody cheaper to do my gardening. I gotta go shop at a cheaper grocery store and serve and be conserve and be a Scrooge and, and then I'll hand it over to my kids. You know, and some of these people, these really sick and twisted, the uber wealthy people like the Rothschild, you can imagine they train their offspring to think like them. And this is one of the dangers of believing in reincarnation. Because a lot of these people are into things like the Rosicrucian belief, if you understand that. These Illuminati class, you see, they train their kids to believe that, look, you're very specially blessed. You're very, you know, you're one of just a handful of uber wealthy people that controls the world. You know, you're the super class. You're the controller of humanity. You're not just one of the useless feeders out there, the commoners, okay? This is how they bring them up and raise them to think like them. These are perverts. These are sick, psychotic people, and there aren't words yet to describe them. I mean, they are definitely hypocrites, and that is unnerving enough. This is what Jesus ranted on these people. You know, you whitewash tombs, you brood of vipers. You know, you, people they don't even know they're walking on your graves. They offend you and they don't even know it. Who are you? You are a miserable bunch. That's who they are. Yes, they're hypocrites. Yes, they think they're a special class. They think you're a subclass because you're just a regular human being. So you're worthy to be trodden under their hooves of these super masters. So this is how they bring their kids up and that's why the kids, they inherit these fortunes that are beyond understanding because when you start talking about billions and trillions of dollars of concentrated wealth and you see, if you saw wealth as a pie, which it is, there's only so much wealth on the face of the earth. If we did the math and we calculated all the oil, all the gold, all the silver, all the timber, all the fish, all the, all the arable land out there, agricultural land. If we did the math, then we could calculate a finite figure. Yes, there is. But if you got your cut of Mother Earth's resources, you can imagine you were born prosperous. That's the reality that God wants you to have. He wants you to embrace it. He wants you to protect it fiercely and understand you have a right, you have an entitlement to be born free. Just like every other creature, creature on the face of the earth, unless it's born livestock or a zoo animal. And there's no humans, to my knowledge, it's, yeah, that, that's illegal. You can't be born into slavery. But yet, it's like a forest for the trees. It's happening to all of us. So we just, just accept it. We just accept this idea that, well, that's normal. I mean, yeah, you got to go out and work. And even the Bible says a man does a, that doesn't work shouldn't eat. Well, that's up to your conscience. That, it's not up to you to be my conscience. It's not up to me to be your conscience. Okay, you work because it's the right thing to do. You have an instinct to go out there and not be a self-serving pissant. Okay, and that's why the system would not break down if we were all free from this monetary, monetary imposed establishment we're all born beholden into. This cost of living, so euphemistically termed. Okay. So, you know, the idea that these people insist on having unsound currency should come as no surprise because the God they serve, the God they represent, the God whose bidding they do, the God whose servant they are, is unsound. Okay, Satan is unsound. His precepts are ugly and unattractive. 
and we don't want them. We don't want to be mean people. We want to be nice people. We don't want to embrace the dark side. We want to embrace the light of truth and justice and mercy and righteousness and goodness. Okay, we just want to be free. We want to be able to be free to enjoy our stinking little lives that are so tenuous and precarious it's ridiculous. Okay, which one of us? I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is that any one of us could be dead at any moment. That's the reality. That's the science. So, yeah, I get angry when I feel like i got to spend so much of my time devote to these people. Now i got to come up with the tax. I just got did my taxes. Now i got to come up with this money. i got to pay the... They're taxing poor people, folks. How ridiculous is that without any representation? I'm telling you, no, I insist that you as my government you do things to protect everyday, workaday people. The average Joe. Oh, stop letting po uh, poverty proliferate. Okay, that's what you're doing. And all these people, they're all part, you know, they're all partaking in this. Okay, all these landlords are complicit. Landlords are like a quasi-government agency now. They're subsidized by the government. Anytime the government gets in there and subsidizing an industry like being a landlord, you can rest assured prices are going to skyrocket. This is another gift after Glass-Steagall. There used to be a thing called rent control. Then it got a bad name because socialism is a, got a bad name. And then they, they say, oh no, we don't need any controls. It was a regulation. It was a consumer re protection regulation. Talk to Ralph Nader about why consumer regulation, consumer protection regulations are a good thing, not a bad thing. Okay, but no, we're trained. No, rent control, that's anti-capitalistic. Capitalistic? Give me a break, you people are one big monopoly. Fixing prices on us. Causing our currency to be debased through cost of living inflation. You understand how this works? So our burden never goes down. It's like we're all running in the sand. We're trying to get ahead. We're trying to save a few bucks for our future, for our children. We're trying to save up to put a down payment on a house. But it keeps getting swallowed up by unsound currency through cost of living inflation, the debasement of our currency. And you got all these people that are partakers in it. They're all working together to do this, while, like one conglomerate monopoly, okay, these establishmentarians. And you have to ask yourself, are you involved in an industry that's doing that? Are you taking advantage of it? Are you as a landlord saying, well, that's the going market rate. Look, I just looked it up today. Do you understand? Are you ruthlessly honest with yourself? Do you understand how those markets have been manipulated? How all the consumer protection regulations have been removed from it? And now your tenants are at your mercy. Are you, are you willing that the shoe be on the other foot? Are you willing to take a taste of your own medicine? If not, you're going to hell. I can promise you that. And so I stand here, not as your enemy, but as your friend, trying to save your wretched soul, your pitiable, hypocritical soul, from going to hell. Because all hypocrites go to hell. If you're not willing to stand on the other side of your business practices, then you're going to hell. And don't just think that you, you can delude God and BS God, because you can't. When you stand before your maker, one to one, and you've got to an answer for your business practices, okay? then you're, you know, you're not going to be able to rationalize it with, with a bunch of psychobabble. It's one-on-one, -on -one, man, and you better know because if you say, yes, I'm ready to be on the other side of my business practice, well, guess what? Then maybe that's exactly what you'll get because that would be the just desserts, wouldn't it? So God's not stupid, and God's going to do it. There will be a day of reckoning. That day might come when you breathe your last breath because there's no more time to repent and say, God, this guy is making sense. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to spend eternity with a gaggle of hypocrites, these merciless, bloodthirsty thugs down there. Okay, I hate these people. I can't stand them, you might say to yourself. I sure don't want to go down there. Well, then listen to me and come together as a family. Care what God's opinion of you is. Care about your conscience, about your integrity, about being somebody, being true to yourself. Care about your fellow man. See them as your family too. See your neighbors as your own kids. Okay, care about people. That is loving people because these are the only two commandments with teeth that God gave us. Is put God above all else. Of course, this is the rightful thing to do. Hell, he gave you the brain. He gave you the ability to, to praise God, to, to put him above, to have, understand these things. He gave you the ability to appreciate beauty. He gave you your eyeballs, all your senses, your sense to smell something beautiful to taste something wonderful, 
to hear beautiful sounds and music. He gave us these things, so of course we put God first. Of course we praise God. It's logical. This is practically instinctive, the commandments God gave us.